Welcome to the People Data for Good podcast with Al Adamson. Hi, welcome back to the People Data for Good podcast. I'm very excited to be talking to Jeff Bermant, CEO of Cocoon, My Data Rewards. Jeff, how are you doing? Al, oh, great. I'm doing fine. I'm here in, in sunny Santa Barbara, so I'm not far from, uh, I'm in California, let's put it that way. Hey, it's uh, good living down there, and uh, my daughter's in your neighborhood, uh, and oh. she's enjoying her high school graduation, so uh, yeah, she's having a blast, so you know, I'm glad she's in safe hands down there, knowing the great people are down there, so again, thanks for joining me, and I'm really excited to learn about what you're doing, because you know, this whole idea of who owns data has intrigued me since I first started in this uh, work 20 years ago, because people are generating data and it's an asset. And obviously there have been companies making money off this. So you're coming in with some ideas that can protect people's rights to you know, their data. So if you would introduce yourself and uh, what Cocoon My Data Rewards is all about. Thanks, Al. And I'm very excited to be here and very excited to talk about what I consider is democratization of the web, particularly about your data. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the background for me is I actually uh, came into California. I was a tennis player and I went to, I was lucky enough to go to USC. I played a little tennis there and then decided I wasn't that good and I better go get a real job. <laughs> and so I taught tennis for a year or two and then actually got a job. I actually worked for some of the, your older folks who watch TV may recognize. I worked for uh, Tom Selleck's dad, Bob Selleck. Wow. In the real estate business, which was very fun. There are, we had a saying, there are no bad looking Sellecks. <laughs> Every one of them look, were, were like movie star, like children. It was crazy. Yeah. I don't but, think you're going to get many arguments there. So no, no. And, and very nice people. I mean, the, the dad taught me a lot. I was just 22 or 23 years old and I worked for him for seven years. And I, as a salesman in the real estate business, love working for him he was the nicest smartest guy i had met and just a really great guy to hang around so from there i i decided to become an entrepreneur in the real estate business and i built my own real estate development company basically from scratch um and i i actually this doesn't sound like much but in the early mid 80s i made my first million dollars uh in one real estate deal and then I, then I lost it. I think the next, you know, the next month that was gone because I, wow. I invested in something else. And but in all in all, I had a very I had a very good career in uh, in real estate, and then decided about ten or twelve years ago that I I really didn't like what was going on on the web, and mm. I thought, oh my god, all these things are happening to people. They're terrible. You're being followed around the web. You're getting all these ads. Not that a lot has changed. I mean, it's still pretty horrible. And now you're hearing about you know about um, companies being taken over by uh, attacks. So all these years, 13 or 14 years, we're just putting Band-Aids on everything to try and stop this, but really there's no unbelievably great solution because there's a hack, there's an opening somewhere, right? And right. Somebody gets in. So with that, I built, uh, I got into the tech. I built a browser called Cocoon. Mm -hmm. It's not available right now. Uh, it's kind of in the, it's, I'll say, laying in the weeds because we're going to revamp it. And it's a secure browser. It's a very cool browser. It's a cloud browser that's built so that all of your data is actually, uh, I'll say, stuck in the cloud or put in the cloud. And so there's nothing on your computer. Your, your computer becomes like a dumb terminal. And, and everything you do is in the cloud. And it's what's cool about it is you can see out, so you can see all the advertising. You can click on anything you want. You can have no advertising if you want, or uh, but they, they can't see in. Mm -hmm. And that's because you're protected by our, our cloud. And so it's, it's pretty cool technology, but we, the biggest problem, which all in all tech, you find failures in companies is they can't figure out how to make money. Right. And, right. <laughs> So kind of we built, yeah, we, we kind of built the coolest thing that you could build. I was very proud of it. I am very proud of it, but, and, and it was all about for people and, um, uh, and, but we couldn't figure out how to make money. And so, you, you know, you had, we had to move on from there. So we pivoted 
into this idea that, well, wait, all this money is being taken by these giant companies, Google, you know, Facebook, and all this is in data and billions, no trillions of, 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 of data is being traded. And the guys being left out are us. I mean, right. us, the, the common guy in the street is not getting paid for the data. And I thought, well, God, that doesn't make any sense. Maybe we should do something about that. And I'm that kind of guy. And I took my own money. The rest of the rest of my investors said, eh, I don't know. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> You're a nutcase. And I put my own money in and started to build this idea that we should democratize getting paid on the web. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're doing. And we're starting small. We'll need lots of help. We'll need lots of people who might make just a little bit of money, but believe in what we're doing. And we'll grow this. And we can grow this. I can tell you how, oper how, how much of an opportunity is this. The, the hour I, I launched this on uh, Chrome or on Google, an hour later, they had taken me down from advertising. Wow. They didn't want anything to do with us. Same with Facebook. They don't want anything to do with us. They don't want you to know that you can you can actually make money from your own data. Right. And it is the case where as we fast forward through time and we have a generation of digital natives coming up who are more wise to the fact that this is happening and arguably will be more open to other modes of interacting uh, via the web. And so, you know, what is your ideal, you know, future state going, you know, two, three years out? Is it your hope that young people are in fact the ones who adopt this technology? You know, if, if data privacy is a basic human right, which is, you know, something that is voiced more commonly now and the likes of Apple and others are putting that forth, there inherently then needs to be options and how to protect your data. And in your case, monetize that data if you so choose. So what is your ideal future state? What, what would you like to see over the next couple of few years? So I'd like to see two states. One is if you want to be totally private, you can get there. If you, which is very hard to do and free, mm -hmm. that's the tricky part because somebody has got to figure out, well, it can't be totally free unless you're going to be a nonprofit. Uh, it's, you got to make money somehow. So that's one side of the ledger. And then the other side is, you know, I don't think my data is as important as I thought it was, and maybe I want to sell it. Mm -hmm. And so I like those two topics because I came from the privacy world, which was, I don't want any of my stuff to leak out. Then I realized, well, wait, what am I afraid of? I don't do anything wrong on the web. I'm not illegal in any way. Uh, for, th for those type of people, they need to, you know, go off and use, uh, you know, some of the browsers that are out there, Tor, so on and so forth. Uh, but I see that, it, that you should have the absolute right to make your decision about your data. And that's where what's happened is we've lost control. We never actually had the control. Actually, we've been, in my opinion, we've kind of been spoofed mm -hmm. by the big companies saying that, oh, you get all this free stuff. It's free. It's free. It's not free. Right. We're not free. They, they, they've got, you know, zillions of dollars or billions of dollars are making off us. And I just think, I think that's just kind of unfair. And, and I, I'm the kind that looks for, I'll say, some social justice that says, why can't we be fair and still be capitalists in that sense? I mean, right. we can do that. I'm proving the point that we can build something, we can make a nice profit, and yet we can pay. I mean, people are shocked when I say, hey, I can pay you 70% of what your data is worth, and I'll take a small cut of 30%, and I will pay for all the servers, I will pay for all the team, all the staff, right? And if we come together, this actually works, and I can show you a spreadsheet it shows, yeah, the company is worth a fair amount of money. It, it, maybe it's not going to be the hundred billion or, or, or uh, yeah, the hundred billion dollar company or whatever these things are valued at. I don't really care. Mm -hmm. I care more about the fact that the that there's some social justice and that there's a there's a there's an element of fairness. Yep. In the web. 
And what I'm hearing is that the individuals generating the data can you know, make money. They can monetize it because they are Absolutely. generating value. And so yeah, let's talk a little bit about what's out there now and why there's a need for something new. So you mentioned, and obviously, Google Chrome, Google's you know, business model is predicated on data and search and you know, all these things that has added immense value uh, to the world. We're in this state where you know there's an awakening it's like hey this data is out there how is it being used and to your point you know how can i benefit not just you know because i'm getting targeted ads but right. because i'm actually creating value for these companies and i would want some monetary return you talk about uh, nonprofit mozilla you know firefox and we can just focus there for a second what is happening or not happening that is inspiring you to go out and do you know, something new and different in this regard? Do you not see Mozilla as a nonprofit doing enough? Do you think there's too much social pressure to, uh, to make money and to maintain the status quo? I mean, what are your thoughts there? Well, I, I haven't, honestly, I haven't, I haven't tracked enough of what Mozilla is doing to know if they have totally not, they're no longer taking money from, from uh, Google. Last mm -hmm. time I looked at it, and, I, and I'm out of touch for a couple of years here, they were making two, $300 million yeah. off of giving results to, mm -hmm. to Google. Mm -hmm. But once again, I mean, my issue, that's fine if everybody knows it and everybody's fine with it. Of course, I think that's fine. I also think that the, Firefox is doing a pretty good job of privacy to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. uh, but if they have to make a living, then, you know, where are they, where are they cutting quarters? Like for instance, with us, we're working on our own search engine and our own search engine will be based off of keywords, but not off of you, not off of your, you know, your identity. Mm -hmm. And I think that's fine. I think as long as we can make money, but if you have that one, I have that private search and I would say duck, duck, go, there's another perfect example of a company that's filling a niche of yep. privacy and, and they've adopted, I think they've adopted a Tor like browser so that you get the total privacy. I used to laugh at DuckDuckGo and people on it because they would do a search and they'd be using Chrome. Mm -hmm. And so they, most people don't understand. Well, that search is private, but as soon as you link it into a Chrome, everybody at Chrome knows what you just want, look for. Right. Right. So to me, and, and it's and, and it's it's sad to me that a lot of companies are not upfront with their customers and telling them, well, if you use Chrome, you know, you're not private. Yeah. So to me, where I'd like to see the world go is you can have the element of privacy when you want it and you can or and and we all have split personalities or a lot of us do. I do for sure. But I might want to be private in some way. And then other ways, it's like, yeah, fine, I'll sell that data. And, and there's got to be some ethics to the sale of the data, which I'm, I'm happy to report that on the most part, uh, there is some ethics that are like when we sell our data, our buyer will not take certain things. And I'm more than pleased, like they won't take financial information, they won't take medical, they don't take hate speech, don't take guns, uh, they don't take bad stuff, they don't take adult sites. So those are not being sold. So you don't have to worry that if you're using us, I can't speak for everybody else in the industry, we'll tell you if we're going to sell those things for you. Otherwise, we tell you we're not selling those and we don't. Got it. And so if I am a listener, I'm like, okay, this is intriguing. I want that. I want to search in a more secure environment. And in fact, I'd like to make some money, <laughs> you know, so how does that look like to you and realizing that you're, you know, building, but obviously you're formulating a, a vision. You know, what does that look like? Am I looking at some choices that I'm making on a weekly basis that say, okay, I'm going to sell this data, this data, um, you know, what, what does that actually look like? No, that would be, in my opinion, for the user, that becomes too cumbersome. Mm -hmm. And so the way we've set it up, so well, let me start from the download. So you come and get our app, uh, and it's you know Cocoon MDR at the at I at uh, at Android. We don't have iOS yet. We will. Uh, I'm hoping July eighth uh, for the truck show, and I'll talk about the truck show in a minute because it's one of my passions is trucking, and we'll talk about how I'm going to get excited. I'm very excited to get involved in trucking, and I'll tell you the reason why in a minute. Right. But 
but uh, you download the app, uh, which is, as I said, Android. You follow the instructions, which is just says, I agree. I agree to sell my data. We tell you what we won't sell. I think I just kind of outlined for everybody that we don't sell that data. The rest of it, um, if, you, if you're, the biggest way right now you make money is geolocation. So that geolocation data is very valuable. When I say very valuable, it depends on how many miles that you actually drive and what you do. So for instance, if I'm just walking around, um, the data may not be very valuable, but if I drive, like I'm a truck driver, I might drive 12,000 miles and that's worth probably $25 a month to me. Now mm -hmm. we're not talking huge sums of money and that's because uh, it's gonna take a while for us to get enough users that we can demand higher prices and we can demand more money. Mm -hmm. And my job, which is what I'm really looking forward to, is we're the spokesman for people. We're the guys that say, no, 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 you're not paying us enough. Or we got three sources to get paid for. Because this is all about, we take a percentage. So mm -hmm. we're on the same size as our customer. I don't take my money first. I make sure my customer gets paid first. And then we get paid, a, like we talked about, 20 to 30%. And the customer gets a 70, 80%. And so geolocation is the first way. And then we've just launched a browser and the browser is based off of Chrome, although I think we may change that. We are, we're having some issues with that. And that allows you to surf the web and you get paid for certain pages that you go to. Hmm. Now that's not huge sums of money, but as we build our own search engine, we'll be able to pay more and more for those pages. And eventually, you know, maybe you make five to seven to eight dollars a month on your web browsing pages. It's mm -hmm. better than what it is. And we're going to add a store so that you can get discounts off of that store. So it's easy. You'll see a search and then you hit one of our cocoon shopping sites. There'll be an Ebates type of store that will pop open and you can get another savings. Mm -hmm. And so to us, it's all about either saving money for people or making money for people. And I want to change the dynamics of the web so that it's really a fair shake. We're not at the disadvantage because I'm thinking I kind of represent people and the, yeah. there's big corporations that just want to represent themselves. Yeah. Now I, it is a noble quest and yeah, I'm certainly rooting for you in this regard um, for the simple reason, as we've agreed, is that there are ethics here where the people who are generating the asset have been taken for granted. Um, and I don't think that I many are going to argue with that. And, you know, I know there are some who say, well, you get X, you know, you get access to this no. and, and that. Totally get it. However, we've gotten to this point where there is uh, an inequity in the relationship. I, I think you're, you, you would agree. So if I am listening again and I say, okay, I, I want to do this. You know, it sounds like it's not going to be number one, much money, but it's not also not going to be uh, much to manage. It's kind of, okay, I'm going to get, you know, 20, 30, maybe a hundred dollars a month that, you know, at some point, if I'm frequently on your, um, on your tool, on your app, yeah. is that, you know, a fair expectation? You know, yeah. Because what, what should be the expectation? So your expectation, if you're just a browser, Maybe it's just a few bucks, but if you hang with us, and this is what I'm asking people to do, get involved. Mm -hmm. and, and the more we have, more people we have, like a million people would give us the rights to demand a lot more money mm -hmm. uh, because it, it's in numbers. So mm -hmm. you go to these companies and they go, why would I want to process, you know, 20,000 people's data? Because, because he, here's your challenge. Your challenge is they're getting data. And I, I know people are going to be a little shaken up about this but that shazam that shazam and, and apple's doing something about it we'll talk about that in a minute but that shazam app who millions of people have they're selling that data mm -hmm. and so when i go to sell my twenty thousand people they look at me and they go well that's not many people yeah. but so they look at shazam and they go oh my god i got a million people on there that are doing all these things and remember in the app with the, the odd part about the app it's not the app it's the phone so mm -hmm. all the rest of that information on your phone, your 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 phone ID, uh, is being uh, being used. It's, it's called your. Uh, it's not a phone ID. Sorry, I don't want to misstate that. It's your uh, uh, advertising ID, mm -hmm. which everybody has. Which, by the way, you can go in and change if you want. 
you personally going to change a uh, little bit of tech work to do that. Um, but uh, that ID is being shared. And so somebody's being paid thousands of dollars off of you um, for your data. And so it's being given away now. And it's being given away by those apps that you have on your phone. And that's why Apple came out rightly so and said, I want everybody to know that your data is being taken and sold. And are you okay with it? Mm -hmm. So my customers, they go, oh, sure, because I'm getting paid for my data. And I think that's how the world should be. I think every one of these apps should be paying us for our data. They're not going to. So that's my job is to figure out how do we get paid? You know, with that in mind, you, know, you mentioned Apple, and I want to get to the truck show in a second. Um, but just to stay with that you know, theme, because Apple is advertising you know, data privacy. However, that, from your perspective, obviously, isn't enough. That there is, you know, some remuneration that can and should be coming back, you know, to the individual. I'm sensing that for this to work, it's going to be a group of individuals who are going to say, "Okay, enough is enough. I want to do something different." So that's going to require a behavior change. So my pointed question is, who do you think? is going to make that change? What does that persona look like? You know, is it, is it truck drivers? Is it uh, young people? Is it people who, uh, you know, are just more sensitive to uh, data privacy and ethics and, you know, want to, you know, make a few extra bucks and disrupt, you know, the norm? I mean, who is it from your perspective? Well, I think you actually, I would say there are groups. Okay. And I would say people who think the web is unfair. Not so, that's, a, that's a worthy group to have yeah. it right. They have it right. It's not fair. Yeah. Um, the the next group could be somebody who really values the money, and that would be today like a truck driver who's mm -hmm. making twenty twenty five dollars a month uh, a month more because they're driving you know ten thousand miles. Right. So that's another group, and it could be like somebody who needs to save money. I've got a guy on my team; he's the head of marketing. He's he pinches every penny. It mm -hmm. just that's his nature. Mm -hmm. So that's another group that I find that that would have, I would say the least ones would be, you know, uh, somebody who's a, a, a bazillionaire, billionaire, he's like, eh, I don't really care about, you know, six or seven dollars or twenty dollars. I know when I got my first pair of new shoes out of my data sales. So I went and did it because I wanted to see, well, how does this work? And I got, I don't know, I, I made about two hundred dollars uh, in six or seven months. I went out and bought a brand new shoes and I, I wore those shoes and was carrying them around like this, like I just made 200 bucks and I got these blue shoes and they were wild looking blue shoes. I should wear, I should wear them every day to a, a big, so I can flip them up and go, well, this is what I earned. I got, it's not free. It's I sold my data. I don't want people to think it's free money. It is free money in the sense that you just never gotten it before, but right. you are selling something and there is some ethics behind the selling. So I don't want people to think that we're unethical. I'm as ethical as it comes. If anybody wants to look me up on the web, you'll see nothing but good things about us and our ethics are very high. And it's very important that we do the right thing for people. And if you, you know, I say to people, well, they feel like something happened to their data, call us up or send us an email and we'll get it fixed. That's the kind of company we are. It's different than what I'd like it to be different than what I see out in the internet today. I think the world's changing and we should change as societies and, and companies. You know, I'm, I can assume the answer, but I want to ask it anyway, uh, because if I'm listening to you, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. You know, this, yeah. this is, this is cool. Uh, you could have taken uh, a role of influencing the established players. Uh, instead, you chose to create something new that's going to disrupt the norm. Why take that step versus trying to influence policymakers or you know existing you know companies? Did you just view that as a non-winnable strategy? That hey, this really deserves a focus product and investment. So, you know, the pointed question again is, you know, why yeah, take this? Yeah, 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 no, it's a good point. Let me give you an example. So uh, about a year, year and a half ago, Andrew Yang came out with his, I think his, his dividend project. 
and he got three or 4,000 people, maybe more to sign up for this. And the, 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 the focus was on Google, was on Chrome. Mm -hmm. Chrome paid absolutely zero attention to this. Now, now, Andrew's a great guy. I actually support his, I don't want to get political, but I like Andrew a lot. I think- I like him too. Yeah. yeah I think he's a great moderate type of guy um, and good for our country. Uh, but um, I, I thought it would go nowhere and it did. And, and honestly, I mean, I'm a capitalist but I'm a, I'm a capitalist with a heart. And I believe that we should treat people fairly. And, and what I, I don't think corporations will change their business models unless somebody really presses them. Mm -hmm. So Andrew tried to do it with Google. It didn't work. And he's given up on the project. The project basically is defunct or just about defunct. So it's my job to come along and say, well, I'm not gonna be able to change those guys' minds. They have a, look, they have shareholders. And if the shareholders said, if somebody said to their shareholders, look, you're going to take, you're going to give 70% of your profit away to the common everyday person, they would look at them like, you're nuts. You're yeah. not going to do that. We'll fire you as the CEO or the president or whoever you are in the company. You're out of here. And we're going to go accept somebody who's focused in on, on our, our way we've set it up. But because I came and set mine up differently, where I said, no, it's us people on one side and we're going to go make money for us it's kind of like rei think mm -hmm. of like rei rei came along and set up their company like well this is really for our co-op mm -hmm. and you could easily say well this is kind of a co-op in its own way mm -hmm. it's not set up as a co-op but it's set up as we want to be successful for our customers and not just for our shareholders our mm -hmm. shareholders have to understand that in order for us to be successful we need to be successful with our customers at getting them the most amount of money we can ethically for their data. Well, I, yeah, I like the co-op comparison because there is something inherently uh, communal about what you're talking about. And that's almost a dirty word in some in America, and, and it should not be uh, because it is about, you know, helping one another and creating um, fairness and also doing something that is for the greater good. Um, so you know, my, my question that you know, has popped to mind as I've kind of been holding this back, you know, since we started is that yeah, there are options. You, you mentioned at the beginning, you know, nonprofit, there's public benefit corporations, you know, there's uh, co-ops, you know, so there's different types of, of business models. And I suspect you're maybe still evolving and there's still some decisions to be made in that regard. But in terms of how you're organizing, you know, what are your thoughts and ideas there? You know, because obviously you're selling something. And so why would somebody just want to join other than, you know, make a you know, a buck, you know, why are they going to build trust in you and what you're doing? A great, great question. Uh, let me start with, I believe capitalism co-ops can coexist. Mm -hmm. And, and the lucky part for us, since this is a new way of thinking about it is it doesn't have to be, well, it is one side. Mm -hmm. It's our side is the, is the consumer who's un, unfairly been paid, not been paid for their data versus people that will, will buy our data or I'll say Chrome or other guys that don't want us to succeed. I mean, uh, pretty obvious when, and, and the funny part, by the way, is that since I own a real estate company, they're actually one of my tenants. Google just became one of my tenants, but they caught me a fraud and all the rest. I got a, I got a computer telling me you're fraudulent and oh, no. we, we can't advertise on us. And, and when I tried to call somebody at Google, cause it's like, well, that's not true. Yeah. There's nobody to talk to. I mean, you right. just get. I, I, I'm sure some of your, her, your, uh, your listeners have had the same experience where we got a bot called Elizabeth, yeah. and Elizabeth would always say to us, "I'm sorry, you can go no further with this." <laughs> <laughs> so the the answer, the short answer is, I believe capitalism in this way can work, and and you have to convince an investor. Look, as long as we're making a profit and it's a reasonable profit. With this kind of thing, and I'm not saying everyone's like this, but with us, where it's where I believe the the user has been treated unfairly, it's powerful because we as a group 
I can have a successful company and the users can get paid. And it's a herd mentality that kind of works. Got it. So, so I, I like the, I like the way we're going and I like the fact, by the way, you'd have a hard time. If you're going to be a nonprofit, you'll have a hard time raising money for something like this from investors. They're going to look at you sure. like, well, what's in it for right. us. Right. And, and most nonprofits are like, uh, you know, and then that's not our cup of tea. Right. No, that's uh, very understandable. And, you know, particularly given speed and, and decision making you know, in a competitive environment like that, yeah. you, you need to be agile, of course, and nonprofits aren't known for that. <laughs> so no, for sure. yeah. I've served on a few and they, they take a long time to make a decision. Yeah, I, and, I, I like the model. It's, I think the model will work. And I think if people jump on board, whether you're making a little bit of money or you just like the idea we're going to have a another thing we're going to be doing shortly is a crowdfunding campaign and the reason i'm doing crowdfunding I'm sure i could hit up some of my richer friends and maybe be easier once again i like the idea if we can pull it off that you you know put in a hundred bucks and maybe you end up with making you know a couple thousand or more off of the company mm -hmm. i love that i have a i have a son who worked for a company and and he made two hundred thousand dollars when the company went public and to me, I mean, it was, it was fantastic. Yeah, no, that would be good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. So there is a scenario as you're talking where companies might encourage their communities, their prospective buyers and customers to use your browser instead of another. Do you foresee that, you know, happening where they're, you know, values-based, uh, you know, companies and say, hey, you know, you want to reach us this is our preferred uh, partner or preferred you know, browser that we recommend if you want to engage in our store and uh, you just use it in general. Do you see that happening? Well, I don't see it happening with, with companies like, we'll say like Apple, that maybe you're, I mean, you have to step back and look at Apple. Apple's saying to people, hey, you should know who's getting your data and how they're using it. I applaud mm -hmm. them for that. However, on the flip side is, Apple's getting to see everything that you get to do. Right. I mean, those phones are, you know, they're not that they're not looking in on those phones too. Yeah. So you got to take the Apple thing with a little bit of, of, of cynicism. Um, so do I see people coming on board? Maybe, maybe. I, I, I don't know at this point. I think it's a people's movement. It's kind of like, you know, it's a little bit like social justice. Enough people say enough. Mm -hmm. we, we really have to change this. Um, then yeah maybe maybe okay. uh, you know and I, and I think it's a great movement I just think that as I started off this conversation I think it's time that we people have a share in something versus these the corporations are not going to change until we change them and the yeah. only way you're going to change them is go compete with them then yeah. all of a sudden when they lose their their customers either buy you or they go yep you know what yeah. we need to change how we operate yeah, I 100% I agree. And that is going to be, you know, a big lift, obviously, because we're yeah. talking about Apple and Google, you, you, there's no uh, bigger players. And, and it doesn't so, have to be that way. I mean, it could be that you decide, uh, I'm not going to use them, I'm going to use these smaller guys, we're going to give you great service. And we you still end up making money and, and you've done your little part to help change the world. Uh, and it's not, this is not a social justice thing. I'm not saying, you know, oh my God, it's going to change the world. It's just a little thing that I think, well, it's kind of not fair. And we've been kind of duped for, for all these years that that free, and it's not free. I, my first advertisement was, well, you're the product. Yeah. You know? Because I mean, right now the option is, okay, if I don't like what's happening, then I don't use the internet. <laughs> I don't use yeah. the browser. Yeah. And that is not realistic in this day and age. So you're, you're, you're putting forth an option and, you know, now it's just about, to your point, getting adoption and that there are people build habits around it. You know, it, it could work. Something that will come to mind for anybody listening is, okay, I'm now using your app, your tool. And what are going to be the shortcomings? What am I going to miss out? Absolutely. Um, you know, what, what's your answer there? Well, you, yeah, you're going to miss out some. First of all, on your geolocation, you're not going to miss anything. That mm -hmm. you turn this thing on, it sits in the background, and it just makes you money. So you're not missing anything there at all. I, I, 
can't, I can't even think of what that would be. The only thing I can think of is if you have a VPN on your phone and you're, you're not, no one can see where you're going. That's what you're losing mm -hmm. on the, on the, on the browsing side, uh, you're going to lose maybe some features right now we're Chrome based. And so you don't lose any features there, but maybe there's like, when we start our search engine, you'll lose, if you decide to use our search engine and you, you get more, more, uh, uh, pages turned, more money made, you might lose that, the, the wonderful feeling of Chrome or, or excuse me, of the Google search mm -hmm. and Google search, you know, I, I self admitted, it's probably the best search out there. So Yahoo is good. And that's Chrome won't do deals with you. They won't help you in any way. Yahoo has a different perspective and they'll allow you. We're lucky. Uh, there's a, not, not many of us who've gotten the opportunity of becoming a search engine with Yahoo. And they have some very strict rules about uh, how you how you run your operation. So the, you will miss that. And I want to be honest with you, but the flip side is you'll make money. And so yeah. you got to, you have to choose that. Some people go, I don't want to use the browser, but I love the geolocation. And there may be other ways in the future that we'll think of that all be ethical where you decide I want to sell that data, right? Mm -hmm. And then maybe we'll come up with an idea that you can choose what data you want to sell. Uh, yeah. That will take some time before we can get to that point. But once again, the, I think part of the issue is let's get the user to get some control here. Right. right. User's got no control over anything at this point. They're just giving all this stuff away to, uh, to, to Facebook and, and, and Google and the other big companies, and you're not getting paid for it. And you're skip, or you go with us when we get our private browser up, running again you go ah, you don't want anybody to know where i'm going i'll yeah. use this private browser it's still free so yeah. that's what i'm offering is well, how we'll make money so somebody says well how do you make money well we're going to make money off the of search so you have to use our search engine like duck duck go but we're going to get paid on the searches and you get you get the benefit of the free private which for any vpn is going to cost you a 100 bucks so right. you get that for free so at the end of it, and there's an argument you made, you know, Google search going back, you know, 12, 15 years ago was significantly better than anything out there. And that's how they won over time. Um, now, arguably, that search is of marginal value, um, relatively, in other words, if I'm searching for a local store, if I'm searching for, you know, something that is, uh, you know, theme based, you know, are the results coming from Google going to be that much different than coming from Yahoo at this day and age? Arguments can be made till people are blue in the face. That being said, from a consumer standpoint, um, I would contend that it's not going to be a significant uh, difference, at least apparent difference, perceived. It, it, very yeah. little. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would agree with you. It's a little, a little different look, but um, once again, not terribly different. And once again, it depends what you're honest for if you're there for privacy use our search engine we'll end up getting paid you'll be helping us stay alive and giving you the privacy if you're using us to get paid same thing there's a there's a motive for you to do that i like the fact that we're giving people the choices let's not forget about the truckers by the way because i want to I want we'll to come back. I do to want to talk about I, I'm dying to tell the story about truckers. All right. We'll, we'll get there in one sec. I want to do one follow up with, with what our, our theme was because you mentioned uh, private browsing. So now you know, we're in this case where, okay, I want to be secure. I can go use a private browser, but I'm not getting paid for that. So let's just say, acknowledge that maybe there's a future state where I can turn on a browser function and actually monetize my my data just putting it out there and let's say that's your tool that helps facilitate that so i'm just going to put that out there as a construct if we go forward you know first year i make 20 bucks second year i make now you have more leverage with companies and now what do you think what you know what's kind of not that there's ever an end game, but you talk, you know, about Andrew Yang and, you know, others who are saying, Hey, everything from, you know, the data that we're generating and to the profitability of these tech companies that are using infrastructure that's built on tax dollars. And there's very little return, you know, if any coming back 
to the individual. So do you foresee this being a significant amount of money at any point in time yeah. in the hundreds or potentially yeah. even thousands of dollars for I, an uh, I actually do because I think as we and, and this will be one of my challenges as we go so all the things that you're all the devices you're hooking up so it's going to be your dishwasher your sink uh, your radio everything that's being hooked up there's digital information going out all has mm -hmm. value Mm -hmm. And if you collect all that, it could be, and I could get to a point of a family making $2,500 a year, mm -hmm. be a family of four, each doing four to $500 per year of data. Now an individual with us could be doing as much as two or $300. So now if you take a family of four, that's $1,200. Um, and, and I can easily see this going to in the, in the low thousands. I don't think you know, anybody's going to get 10,000, but just think of all the things that we are agreeing to hook up our refrigerators or, you know, washers and dryers, all that is digital information. And frankly, we're just giving that away for free. Our job is to figure out, well, how do we get all this to come through a system so that you get a much nicer check? Hmm. So I, I totally see that, but it's going to take, it's going to take some time. It's kind of a visionary thing. You got to figure it out but it's on my radar. Yeah. You know, we, we should get paid for all these things that should not go to all these people or making money off of us. And it's like, wait, wait, I just like, it's a commodity. You're, you're, we're all commodities in some sense. And this commodity has been overlooked. Like we're the commodity. And it's like, well, no, I'm, I should get paid for me. So at the end of it, your vision is to effectively have uh, the ability to aggregate this data across your life and then package it in ways that can in turn be monetized. Is that a fair summation? Yeah, and, and hopefully ethically, because mm -hmm. that's super important that we are, we are doing that, not giving away personal data. Mm -hmm. so, so let's take your washer and dryer. The amount of energy you use, all that data, you don't have to have a name on that, but mm -hmm. it's important data to know that a household of four is using this much power and that's data going out. Well, you know, that should, that, maybe that can be paid for. Right. Maybe that's yeah. data that is valuable to somebody, maybe valuable to hedge, hedge funds. Look, I'll give you an example. So a hedge funds may be watching washers and dryers. What's the most popular washer and dryer? Well, we can tell that your general electric washer and dryer is the most popular brand. That will help some company decide to make a decision and they'll pay for that data. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you're going to get a check for that data because it was value to someone versus right now it's value to someone and you're not getting anything for it. Right. Now, it makes perfect sense. So let's get to the trucker story. Because <laughs> yeah, I love the trucker. <laughs> we got to bring that home. So yeah, I'll let you take it away. So the trucker. So my early childhood, uh, I was always a go-getter. I was always a kid. I would... As a tennis player, I would be the one who volunteered to go back east, sweep the courts, and they're clay courts, so you rolled them and you swept them. I love to work. And I had this summer, actually two summers, where I worked for a uh, vegetable truck guy in the neighborhood. And they had a nice-sized truck, and I ran around taking orders. Actually, he took the orders, and I filled the orders, so I did the boxing. and put it. I loved being on his truck. I love the sound of the truck. I love the gears. I mean, it was just something very special about that summer or those two summers that I did that. His name was Al Venizio. Uh, he was just a great guy. I mean, we're from a middle, upper middle family. So it wasn't like I was destitute, but I was always just a worker. And I've always had this heart for truckers. And then when I was in college, I kind of liked truckers. I liked them as people. They're honest, they're hardworking. They're what we what I've come to realize during the the pandemic is they're the heart and soul. And without them, and eventually, you know, we'll have automated trucking, more automated trucking. But without them, we we don't have toilet paper on our, our you know, in right. our stores. Right. And I was like, holy smokes. And then when I realized that the truckers could make a fair amount of money from the data, which helps us, admittedly, I'll be honest, uh, but helps them. And it's one of my favorite things. 
Uh, and I had the other story was um, I was driving to New Mexico. My sister lived in New Mexico and I drive back and forth. And one time I got stuck and the car broke down because I was on the CB with the truckers. I love to talk to these guys. And, and today's young guys don't even know what a CB is, but <laughs> they had CBs back there where we talked to each other and there was no internet, right? Uh, and one guy said, I'll, 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 I'll take you home. He pulled over his truck when my car didn't work. He picked me up. I got to sleep in his sleeper, which was, you know, kind of interesting. I, I never had done that. And I got a, I got a ride back to LA. I've never forgotten the truckers for that reason. Wow. wow. So this is, I'm going to, I'm probably the most out of place guy. I'm from a fairly well off family. I don't wear truckers hats. I'm, you know, I'm a middle of the road type of person and I'm going to the Jamboree, the I-80 Jamboree this, 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 uh, in July. And I'm so excited to be with, you know, these, these Americans who are actually every day helping us, you know, survive. Yeah, I, I, cool. I couldn't agree more. And good for you for acknowledging that uh, community. Because, uh, yeah, I, oh, number one, I used to drive a beer truck and deliver beer. And Oh, uh, lucky you. Jeez. And I, I used to go <laughs> up and down I-5 on the system 99 trucks because uh, my second dad, uh, Art Ortega, was a, a driver for them. And so he hooked us up. And, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. They are hardworking and critical to what um, – how our society functions. So amazing. You know, certainly, people. Yeah, certainly celebrate uh, you acknowledging them and, and you know, helping uh, find ways to help them. So a couple more questions before sure, um, sure, sure. We, we wrap here. So, you know, my data rewards co cocoon, you know, it's, if I'm listening, I'm like, yes, yes, yes. You know, when is it going to you know, happen? And how can I, you know, get involved? So for people who are interested, you know, where do you send them right now? So for now, and thanks for asking. So we right now we send you to, you can either go to the uh, Android store and just look up uh, Cocoon My Data Rewards or Cocoon uh, MDR. They'll both pop up. You can read about us. Um, we're getting good reviews. I mean, you know, we have our ups and downs where we have problems with something or another, but we're, we're still in beta, but we're, we're really doing well at this. Uh, and you can just download it. It prompts. You turn it on, you put it in the background. I mean, it's kind of crazy. You put it in your background. If you're not going to browse through it and, if, and you're driving, it will just start making you money. Now, it depends how much you drive and where you go and so on and so forth. Not where you go, but how much you drive. Um, and so that's the easiest way uh, to do it. And in July, if you're, if, you're an, if you're an iOS user, an Apple user, in July, we will come back and announce that we actually um, have, have it for iOS. So right now it's cocoon, C-O-C-O-O-N. Some people like me can't even spell cocoon. Uh, <laughs> so I have to spell it myself a number of times. I'm very dyslexic. Um, so you just go and download it and use it. And, and what I ask people is maybe you're not going to make a lot of money to start, but this is kind of a movement. And if we can make the movement happen and get enough people to go rally behind it, I can then start really making people money and putting pressure on people to are the companies to pay us versus just themselves. Yeah, I mean, it is a noble movement and one that you know has real benefit. It's just yeah. it's not a movement for movement's sake. It's like the, there can be real money, not only over the near term, but you know, longer term as we've discussed. Yeah, so one of the things we like to do, one, one other thing I like to do is I will eventually, I can't do it right this moment, have some nonprofits. So if you're only making two or $3, you know, my answer is it's not a big deal, but just give it away. Give it to mm -hmm. your favorite nonprofit. It's something that helps them. And so we will have a nonprofit. I think, you know, we'll, I'll give my money away. I, you know, yeah. whatever we can do, we will do. And this is, this is, we want to change how the world, and it's a little thing. I don't know how successful it's going to be. It's, I'll tell you how successful it will be. It's how many people say, hey, this is a good idea. And even if I'm only making a few bucks and if I can give it away or I can put it in my bank or give it to my kid, I want to tell one more story. I was in on my 20th anniversary uh, last week. And Congratulations. I was the, thank you. Yeah, it was it was a really big deal to my wife because she said, oh, my God, yeah, 20 years with you. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but I, I was in the pool and, and this guy swam up and he turned out he was a dentist and he had been in the 
and the, he had a great background. He's from a very poor family uh, in the mid, you know, in, in Washington state. And he started talking about, he was a dentist and he had been in the Marines and he started talking about Bitcoin. And I'm going, uh, you know, I, I know a little bit about Bitcoin, but not a lot. And he said, I put $35,000 in Bitcoin and he made $30 million. Oh my God. So I, my point to this is, even if it's just a few dollars and yeah. you save it up and then you go and invest it, maybe maybe it's money that you didn't really think you were going to have and it turns into a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's as simple yeah. as that. Yeah. No, Make I, the I, money, go to Robin Hood or do something. I'm not telling people to go invest it, but for 10 bucks, if you earned it from us and you go, ah, it's not very much. Well, maybe it turns into $3,000. Yeah, I mean, no, he I, turned thirty-five thousand into thirty million. And he was disappointed. He thought he could <laughs> do a hundred million. <laughs> well, I just celebrate what is. If he made that money, you know, yeah, that's you know, what I told him. I said, God bless you. Yeah. But but the the idea, and you know, as we wrap here, yeah, we are generating value ongoing. And if we can make passive income uh, due to our activity, you know, why not? And love your idea of potentially donating it. And you know, to your point, not only is it more fair and equitable for those who are generating the data and that, that asset that's of value downstream, but it can also help, you know, the organizations that are in fact trying to make the world a better place. So certainly celebrate that. That's, that's really, really yeah. cool. So, hey, Jeff, thanks for doing what you do. Uh, thanks for sharing today. Uh, um, again, how can people learn more about Cocoon, My Data Rewards, uh, other than the app? I'm sure you have a website. You know, how can they learn more about you as well? Uh, trycocoon.com is the website. T-R-Y-C-O-O-N.com is yeah. the website. If, uh, if you want to drop me a line, uh, I, I, I don't mind talking to people. I like talking to people. I'm Jeff, J-E-F-F, at the world, the like in Victor, world, C, like in charlie.com. Drop me a line. I'm a, I'm a pretty open book person and love to hear from you and, and share your thoughts with me. Maybe you have an idea that would help the world and, and, and maybe even profit for yourself. Well, again, Jeff, thank you for sharing. Uh, you be well. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll get together in person for too long. Hopefully. I'd uh, like that. I'd uh, like that. Come to, right, this, sure. come to this ruck show if you have a chance. If you don't, I will come back and tell you all about it. It's uh, yeah, I'm be, sure you I am, I am so looking forward to this. By the way, the I-80 Jamboree, that's the truck all to be all. That's where the, uh, apparently the truck history, truck the history of the museum is located. And they have a, I have this big, I mean, I'm just excited to go and, and meet these people and go hang out with them and see all these trucks. What town? It's, uh, it's outside of Davenport. Mm -hmm. It's about Iowa. It's about which I've never been to. Uh, and uh, I was warned, uh, there are no mountains. There are no hills. It's flat. It's <laughs> yeah. corn, it's barns, it's corn and hay. And that's what you're going to see. And a lot of trucks. <laughs> and a ton of trucks. <laughs> All right, Jeff. Thanks again. You hey, Al. Well. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining the People Data for Good podcast with Al Adamson. To find other podcasts, videos, upcoming events, and to join the People Data for Good movement, please visit us at pafau.net.